The word glob is short for global and it actually comes from an old program with the same name that was used in the earliest versions of Unix. These days, globs and wildcards are used interchangeably and shell globbing or file name expansion is a very powerful feature that allows us to match and expand file names based on patterns. And as if this was not enough, we are going to supercharge all of it with a couple of shell options that are just game changing. Welcome to Next Tricks. I am Nick and this is Globbing. How's it going guys? I for one am excited to finally bring up a bit of shell expansion. We're talking about file name expansion in this video and we're going to see a bunch of cool examples as we go through all the wildcards. Let me give you some context since we're going to see more types of shell expansions in the near future. There are certain commands or attributes that you can type in a terminal that the shell will interpret as shortcuts. So right before executing your command, the shell will look for the shortcuts and expand them into what they represent. This process is known as shell expansion. In the context of globbing, globs or wildcard patterns are made up of wildcards or wildcard characters. They can be used to match one or more files for the purpose of, well, anything you can do with them really. Copy, move, delete, archive, backup, upload somewhere or run them through some type of specialized utility. I've prepared a demo directory here with some old wallpapers and we're gonna dive into wildcards and see some examples now. One of the most common uses of globbing is to find files with a certain extension. Introducing the asterisk wildcard. We can use it to match any number of characters, including none. Here are a couple of examples from the wiki. Law asterisk will match law. Laws and lawyer, since each one of these starts with capital L, A, W, and is followed by zero or many other characters. Asterisk law asterisk will match anything that contains those three letters put together somewhere in the middle, or anything that starts or ends with them. In one of my wallpaper directories here, I can list the names of all the image files with the JPEG extension, or files that start with one followed by anything or nothing at all. Next up, we have the question mark to match any single character. Question mark at will match cat starting with either capital C or lowercase, and the same goes for bat or rat or really any other character before at. It will not match at alone as the question mark stands for one single character and it doesn't work for no characters at all. In this example, we have a more messy directory. We can notice a few JPEG files mixed in, some capitalization differences. I could easily use three question marks to list only the files that have a three letter extension like JPEG or PNG. Next, we see a bunch of Windows themed wallpapers and we can focus exclusively on these. And if we want anything above and including Windows 10, we can rely on this naming scheme and use two question marks followed by a dash. We can use right brackets to create sets that would match one single character. Capital C and capital B in a bracket followed by at will match cat or bat when starting with capital letters. Yes, even a big rat if you extend a set by adding a capital R to it. In my example with the Windows wallpapers, I could use a set to match files for Windows 10 and 12 but not 11 by using 0 and 2 in a bracket right after Windows dash 1. Just remember that sets do not read like a string, it's just a list of individual characters that could be matched but they still match only one character. Still in the context of sets, you can use ranges. Careful this one is case sensitive and locale dependent so you can't always expect 26 letters there. Of course, you can use any ranges like 3 to 6 and A up until F. And it's also probably a good time to mention that you can have multiple ranges within the same set or even a mix of individual characters and ranges. And yes, they would all still match one single character. The exclamation mark is the last wildcard. It can be used at the beginning of any set to invert it. So a set that looks like exclamation mark A, B, C will match any character except for A, B and C. And this, of course, works with any sets, no matter the complexity. Time for a short roundup and a few important notes. So we had the asterisk that matches any sequence of characters, including none, the question mark that matches any single character, the character class that matches any single character specified within the brackets as individual characters, for example, A, E, I, O, U to match all the vowels, ranges like 0-9 to match any digit or a mix of those and the exclamation mark that can be used to negate an entire set. 
If you've already seen my video on Regex, you may have noticed some similarities with globs, but make no mistake, while they are both pattern matching mechanisms, they have key differences in their purpose and capabilities. Long story short, globs are much simpler and focus on file limit path matching, while Regex is more versatile and used for general purpose pattern matching and text manipulation. Globs can have slight differences across different shells as they are part of the shell's globbing mechanism and implementation. While the basic globs are similar across most shells, there may be some variations and additional features specific to certain shells. For instance, Bash supports extended glob patterns and recursive globbing through shell options. Zshell has probably the most extensive globbing system and supports advanced glob qualifiers. Fish has its own globbing syntax, it's simpler and more intuitive, and it also provides recursive globbing. By modifying our shell options, we can tweak certain behaviors of globbing and unlock some superpowers along the way. Fun fact, traditionally globs do not match hidden files. If you're trying to match anything that starts with a dot, you'll need to activate the dot glob option. To do that, you can use the command shop-s.glob. We used the shop command before in my video about CD. The S flag is used to set the option, U flag to unset. If you run it interactively, the change will only affect the current session. And if you wish to persist this, you can add the command to your shell's RC file. That's .bashrc for bash. Earlier we saw that globs are case sensitive as most things are in Unix, but there's a shell option that we can flip to make them insensitive. It's called no case glob and once we set it, capitalization won't matter when writing globs. I can imagine this being very useful in certain situations, but for my day to day globbing needs I prefer to keep it off and stay vigilant. One of my favorite options is glob star. When enabled, this feature allows you to use the double asterisk wildcard to match all files and directories recursively within a directory hierarchy. By default, it's disabled in bash, but it can be enabled with shop-s glob star or by uncommenting the line in your bashrc file that might have already been provided by your distro. One last important option is xglob. This one basically enables extended glob patterns, which allows us to write composite patterns and use some cool operators. You can read through the section about xglob in your shells med page. For more details, I'm only going to show you a few basic examples that I think can be useful. We can list all the files with a JPEG or PNG extension. This is basic. We can also achieve that using brace expansion, which we'll cover in a different video. Similarly, we can list all the files starting with Mac OS or Windows followed by a dash or whatever. This would have been a pain with basic globs or no brace expansion. The usefulness of these gets more obvious when you want to exclude files. For instance, I want everything that doesn't start with Windows. I actually also want to exclude one and Mac. Last one, we can match files that start with Mac and are followed by anything other than book or OS by negating a sub-pattern that creates a list of alternatives. Hey, this is all fun and games until someone's file system gets by a glob. I cannot stress enough the importance of caution when using any type of expansion. Uncle Ben would back me up. The dot glob and glob store options, for instance, are turned off by default for a reason. So, for the sake of data, stay safe and back up regularly. I really hope you found this video useful and that you learned something cool from it. We can keep the party going if you subscribe, hit the like button and the bell to get notified when my next video drops, which if it does on schedule, it'll be no thanks to the premiere of Oppenheimer. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.